we are here. Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast Live Saturday Night Edition. Why you always got some wild hat on, man? Don't hate, man. Every man, time I, you first start, of all, you got some wild hat on. I, man. I gotta show support, man. I'm a Navy midshipman, you know, put a beating on the Air Force today, thirty-four okay, to okay. seven. So you know, right, we, right. they undefeated five and zero. Oh, so I gotta represent, man. Okay, I respect that. Army's five and zero oh, too. So you know, number one in the number one in the conference. So yeah, too bad you don't you don't you don't put on. I don't, one, I don't what. You know what I'm saying? You don't listen. I'm I'm good for him as long as they're not playing the Irish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they play Notre Dame, and you know that is what that is, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. hope the Army smack Notre Dame, boy. No, that's not that'll, gonna happen. Man. That'll be great. I want to see your not face. Going like to happen. Everything's gonna change for you, B. <laughs> You're like, man, no, no man, Army, go Army. You know, <laughs> hydrate, hydrate. <laughs> Drink water. Drink water. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. For those of y'all uh, just checking in, actually, nobody's checking in right now. So we're just going to chill for a few minutes and we're going to kick it till um, till we get a little more uh, traffic in the chat. But um, what's good, fellas? What's happening? G, what's good? Cooler, man. Maintaining. Bicking back and being bull? What's it look like? He, he, ain't, got, he ain't got the stunners on today. I ain't hate. Oh, yeah. He, uh, Try Shannon Sharp me and shit. <laughs> hey, nobody try Shannon Sharp me, man. Wrote an email to the corporate out for me. Hey, we, <laughs> hey, man, we got we got to let the people know, man. This is a serious podcast to be taken seriously. Hey, said he went he went back to his locker and he saw that letter on the table uh, <laughs> on, the, on his locker. He got to report to the front got office. That, got that fine real quick. Uh, uh man, what's up, Sneed? Salam, brother. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Always good to see you in here. Um, we're just gonna uh take a few minutes here and uh see if we get a little bit of traffic again, and then we go ahead and start going, man. Got got definitely have some interesting things to talk about. So, you know. Um <clears throat> excuse me. Um yeah, man, freaking Saturday afternoon, man. It's been raining on and off all day, man. How's the weather up there in BMO, G? Amazing. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's real nice. Right. say the same. Yeah, right. We might have another storm coming through. I saw that um come across my phone, so we'll see. I heard. I heard it was. Yeah, they said all of Florida on the target. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole thing, the whole state of Florida is under the. Under yeah, the yeah. That that cone is big, man. I was like, yeah. what's going on here? I was like, damn. So we'll see what happens, man. I can, I can, I can deal with some. Uh, it is a fantastic discussion. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, I can deal with some rain, but um, you know, when it starts really getting crazy, I don't know. Nino, Nino, what's good, my brother? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Thank you for always being in here supporting us, man. Nino, man, good thing we're not finna talk about you know who today, so I'm not even gonna bring it up. You know, it's gonna come up briefly though, because we gotta talk about no, the Lakers. no, no, no. Keep him separated. He didn't play. Why not? He didn't play. Of course he did. Who cares? He LeBron didn't James didn't play. No. LeBron James didn't play. No, no he didn't play. He didn't yes, play. He did. No, he didn't. He was on yes, the line. That boy was in street clothes. What you talking about? No, LeBron James. Now let played. me know you didn't watch the game. No, LeBron James played. Bronny played. <laughs> I'm messing. With, is he not LeBron James? I'm, I'm messing. No, with you. I'm okay. I'm about to say I know what. <laughs> I was waiting for you to catch on. I was like, yeah, I was like LeBron James played. No, LeBron James played. LeBron James Jr. played. Yes, LeBron that is James correct. Jr. That is correct. Jr. played. <laughs> no, I was I'm, like, I'm like, Bruce can't be serious right now. Like, really? <laughs> like, no, LeBron James. You saw that whole game really and did. you didn't see not one Bron highlight. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, you, you know got, you got me with that one. That yeah, was you know I'd be dumbing out sometimes, man. You know, uh, yeah, that was a good have, one. I don't have a whole lot of sense, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's, that, that's that army medicine they be shooting in your man, veins. That's, that's at not camp. what that is, man. No, yeah, that's, man. That's not all, all them shots they gave you, <laughs> man. You got the same shots, man. You know we all Bro. Got the same shots. So let, let me ask you a question because I never What's did up? ask this question to anybody in the army. So did y'all want like did they make it the hall of shots for y'all too? 
No. Like when y'all walk through, like they made it look like it was a gauntlet. It was like a gauntlet when you go into boot camp, right? Mm-hmm. And you walk through, like you got your sleeves up, you roll your mm-hmm. sleeves up, and it's. <laughs> no, it was. It was. Like just... No, it, Yo, it was crazy. Nah. No. It was nuts. It was no. nuts. No, we went and got our shots. The only thing that messed me up when we came out from getting the shots, we got back in formation. And um, remember this G drill song did a, uh, he did a, a open ranks or no, not open ranks. He did a, a half right face. And we like, what could we possibly have done that we were about to get smoked out here? Just <laughs> from the shot. But really, right. He just made us do the 10 pushups just to, you know, work the shot through your arm a little bit. So it didn't like bubble up right under your skin. Oh, I was really thinking, like, what could we possibly have done? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not that they needed a reason, but, you know. <laughs> hey, y'all got them shots halfway? You already know. Oh, God. <laughs> Dang it, man. <laughs> good times, good times. I'll right, tell you, man. Let's... Hey, Navy ain't no better, bro. We, we got the – they do the peanut butter. I believe it's a uh, – not penicillin. What is that? I forget what shot that's called, but they call it the peanut butter shot, right? And it's, mm-hmm. you get shot in the, you know, in the in the rear. I'm gonna say rear to keep it clean, mm-hmm. right? And once you're done, like it's one of the worst shots that you mm-hmm. guys could get, right? Like I'm talking, all you hear, oh, <laughs> the glute. like when when these folks when these folks are taking it, pause. But mm-hmm. uh, I mean, everything's gonna sound pause worthy. But <laughs> anyway, after you're done, you know what I mean? You okay. you you put your uniform back on, you put everything uh-huh. back up. And they make these folks go sit Indian style on the hard <laughs> floor, G. Damn. On the hard floor. So, mind you, I'm over here waiting my turn. I'm like, damn, I'm hearing these folks like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, the women yeah, screaming, yada, 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 yada. So, me, lucky, lucky me, they called. They was like, all right, Bass, walk up. They saw I had my red dog tags. I'm allergic to penicillin. Okay. And it was like, all right, go over there to the counter. I'll go over to the counter. Get these, you know, they had me a subscription and they tell me to go sit down. I'm like, wait, I ain't got to take the shot. So I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, cool. Man, I watch everybody just like they, they're they trying their hardest. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we ain't get that. Trying to sit down and lean on one uh, side, man. Bro, it, it uh, was torturous for him, bro. It was funny for me to watch. Man. But right. man, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Oh, oh, man. All right. Well, let's, let's go ahead and get started, fellas. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we bore the people with all these wild military stories and whatnot. All the oh, ones man, we, we, did, we didn't do a military show, man. <laughs> yeah, we need to have a military story, segment one day. You, know, what? You, know. you already know it. You already know it, G. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. All right. So uh, we got some good topics for you all today. Um, obviously, we got uh, some, some good uh, NFL games coming up uh, tomorrow. Uh, two main ones that we really want to get into a little bit is uh, Pittsburgh and Dallas, as you can see in the thumbnail, and the Ravens and the Bengals. Those are huge. Uh, we got the notification, not the notification, but we were um, made aware that Derrick Rose is going to be retiring. He's after 16 years in the league. And uh, so we're going to we're going to talk about that. Most specifically, is he a Hall of Famer? So that should be interesting. And um, this the third topic is a topic I've. I've been trying to avoid it for a while because it's got so many tentacles and really it's a rather exhausting topic, but it is a huge topic in, in the sports world. So it's something that um, I think I'm going to have to get into. And uh, so ooh, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. But, um, yeah, we're going to talk about the the drama in the WNBA and Caitlin Clark and all that good stuff. And, we, you know, we've talked about Caitlin Clark on this channel here before, but it's just I don't even know, man. It's a lot to get into. It's a lot to get into. So. We are going to, we're going to talk about all that. But before we get started, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't let's go ahead and get to our next topic this one i don't know it's kind of Bittersweet, I guess. And it also invites some questions, right? 
Um, so we we heard that uh, Derek Rose, uh, well, Derek Rose announced. I guess we didn't hear. We he announced uh, what earlier this week or late last week was it? That's last week. Okay, late last week. Really? And we didn't. We're now getting to this. Jeez. Yeah. Season. And when he posted anyway. the video, I think it was last. Yes, week, yeah. yes, yes. You're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, Derek Rose, um, who was, uh, I think he's the youngest ever league MVP. Correct. And when he was younger, he was absolutely elite, just a monster. Um, arguably the most athletic point guard and explosive that we've ever seen. Him, Westbrook, John ja Morant, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so he announced that after a 16-year NBA career, he's retiring. He's not going to play any further. And uh, he's just, uh, well, you can see him right here. Super explosive, great handle, great finisher at the rim. Um, and you can see he had the combination of the elite athleticism along with like, Oh God. <laughs> yeah. That was mean. That's like along my favorite with, dunk ever. Of, of Derek right, that's crazy. Yeah, right. Yeah. The way he cocked he it back. Like Boom. That. Yeah. That was bad. Um, yeah. So he had the combination of the elite athleticism. He could shoot it. Obviously he wasn't Steph, but he could shoot it in the mid range. And um, he also was really good at difficult finishes around the rim. And that, you know, you could tell that's the playground ball right there. The way he can mm-hmm. finish at the rim. Um, Chicago kid. And so uh, it, it begs a couple of questions. I guess the first question, and this is the main point of this topic, is Derrick Rose a Hall of Famer? And uh, I'm going to stop talking, and I think I started with G last time, so this time I'm going to start with you, Transformer. Is Derrick Rose a Hall of Famer? All right. NBA Hall of Fame. Basketball Hall of Fame. Basketball Hall of Fame, right? Mm-hmm. NBA Basketball Hall of Fame. Is one of the easier Hall of Fames to get into. Can we, That's true. Can we, can we agree on that? All right. Yes. There are quite a few players with a resume that is also questionable that got mm-hmm. in due to maybe championships, not necessarily leading them. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe won one defensive player of the year, but known for the defensive prowess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, there's no true accolades to their career except for like a defensive player of the year or, like mm-hmm. I said, you know, multiple team winning championships, right? Right. Derrick Rose, his accolades doesn't stretch further than the first four years of his career. All right. Yeah. Most valuable yeah. player, three time mm-hmm. NBA All Star. I think he made a uh, first team as well. Oh, there you go. You got you got your numbers up there. Uh, yes, you know, first team rookie of the year, uh, mm-hmm. all pro rookie of the year, and things of that nature. I believe he won a couple of FIBA World Cups. Uh, he got gold medal in Turkey, gold medal in Spain. So he has those on his resume. I believe he does okay. add those in there as well, right? Mm-hmm. So with that being said, I look at other careers, right? Uh, one, one particular career I had in mind was Maurice Cheeks. All right. Maurice Cheeks really yeah. got in there off of one defensive player of the year. But yeah. look at his stat line. He's never averaged over 15.6 points a game, mm-hmm. right? I, I don't consider that. A, a a big number to be dealt with uh right with not never averaging over three rebounds other than that you wouldn't really known for much else he has you know mm-hmm. uh, pass the ball as well uh maybe one to two steals but you made the hall of fame right so i yeah. think if if players like that are eligible to make the hall of fame that i think without a shadow of a doubt an mvp the youngest mvp um i believe i think he still holds that record right i don't think nobody yes broke. yeah, yeah he's he still the youngest holds MVP that record yeah, 21 years mm-hmm. old. So the youngest MVP, even though his career, unfortunately, was shortened due to the ACL injuries and things of that nature, I believe he's going to get in the Hall of Fame. I think it's mm-hmm. without a shadow of a doubt. The, the Basketball Hall of Fame, is it's, it doesn't have a high criteria of uh, no, it doesn't seem very so. uh, stats that you need to be in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like you did one or two great things in your career, boom, mm-hmm. you're in. And I think that MVP puts him right where we should, right where we should. Um, you know, he did make a couple of uh, – no, I think he made one uh, conference finals. I believe that's when he played yes. LeBron James in the Miami yes. Heat. Am I mm-hmm. correct? Um, yes. So, and he made that a competitive series as much as he could. That was the MVP season. Yeah. yeah, you know, he made that a competitive series. So, I, I think he gets in the Hall of Fame without question. Okay. G. Oh, yeah. Well, the, no question. I think, man, you talked about this earlier. And, um, yeah, he, he definitely gets in my book. He was one of the most explosive guards. And since I, well, while wow, in this last 90, 2000 era, 2000, 2010, mm-hmm. um, and going forward, he's, he's just been that guy. He dropped, what, 50 points uh, at, at uh, Wilney. He was playing with New York. Uh, this was after all the injuries. It was more mm-hmm. like uh, just in, out of nowhere, 2018, 50 points, 50-point 50 ball. Like, 
I'll, he's he's and for a player to come back from so many injuries, right, and that type of mm-hmm. adversity, and still like, like still like want to play the game that he loved. Like man, like you gotta let somebody in when it comes to that. Like, and then not not even yeah. to mention what we do off the court. I mean, I, the stats are there. The stats are there. The stats are there. Um, it, it, if you look at him taking an MVP from LeBron while LeBron was in his prime, right? LeBron mm-hmm. is a Hall of Fame player. Like, he's going to be a Hall of Fame player, right? No and so while he was in his prime, Derrick Rose was able to, to steal an MVP from him. Um, that that is not debatable. That's fact. Um, this kid, he was terrorizing. Excuse me, terrorizing guards on the court. Supposed to take off from everywhere. Um, I think one of my most more memorable points is when um, I think it was in that final game where he um, put the ball behind it around his back. It was it was almost like it was like a two on one, right? Two on one, uh, and he dunked on. I think his name was Anthony Anthony Cole. Maybe it was a big guy. It was a big guy played with uh, with uh, Miami. Miami, this yeah, same. Miami game. Yeah. Oh, I know this you talking yeah. about. Yeah, is it yeah that was probably one of the. No, no, no. I think it was Anthony Cole. Cole. I think that was his okay. Name. One of the nastiest dunks I've seen, and man, I was sick. Kid, kid got it, man. Like, it, if you don't want that type of talent in the Hall of Fame, then what do you want? Of? Yeah, I mean, even though it's 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 short, right? I mean, he had a short prime of his career, and I think that's what the knockback that you know he's gonna get from you know com- you know spectators and things like that. Like, oh, well, he only averaged. 20 points a game three times in his career all right uh, he only he got one mvp after his injuries he wasn't like that but it's the things that you did that he did while in his prime i mean his prime was only four years yes but other than that i mean even post injury you know 16 points a game 17 points a game 16 18 um gets to minnesota averages 18 gets to detroit average 18 those are still great numbers right it's not like he just fell off a cliff and just started averaging six six points a game for the remainder of his career. He mm-hmm. was still one hell of a threat offensively um, and still and still had balance. Even when he went to New York, you know, he still showed he was able to put that ball behind his head and, and, and put it on you, pause. Um, and, it, you know, still show flashes of what, you know, what we used to see before the injuries. But it's yeah, the Basketball it Hall of Fame, man. It's not it's not hard to get into. And I think and I think the stat is every MVP in NBA history has gotten into the Hall of Fame. With that said, you got to put him in there. Uh, I think all, really high calorie, all high calorie points, too. Like all high calorie points. The, so that's that, what... that. I'm just assessing this game. I mean, we don't make the decisions on who getting in and who doesn't get in. No. Right? We say, oh, you need to average 20 points a game. But then there's several folks that don't average 20 points a game that's in the Hall of Fame. So we look at the impact that he had on the game during his prime before his injury. He can't control. Uh, he can't control getting injury. Injured if you go into the to to the rim, reckless endangerment, and nine times out of ten you you deem victorious, dunking on bigs and anybody that's under that. And, yeah. and uh, total package player, man. In my eyes, total package player. Um, yeah, he gets in. If I if I'm voting, he's get, he's getting in. Yeah, and like like AJ just said, you know, Hall of Fame isn't about talent; it's about resume. And yeah, MVP is on that resume. Your MVP is on there. So yeah. put him in there. Put him in. No question. I think Chicago is going to get another one in there. But that's the first yeah. one since Jordan? No, no, no. Pimper was the last Pimper. one. Yeah, Pimper was the last one. Yeah. So Derrick Rose was a beast pre-injury, as we saw. Um, I think he was a quiet leader. I don't think he was a big talker. I think he led with his play. Um, yeah. to, to, to G's point, he does a lot off the court, but that has nothing to do with Hall of Fame, so I don't, I don't know why that was brought up. That doesn't help you between the lines. Um, really outstanding player. He will go into the Hall of Fame, um, one, because it is the Basketball Hall of Fame, and Basketball Hall of Fame is just weak. And two... To your point, Transformer, this is one I was going to bring up. Uh, I think every single MVP in NBA history has made the Hall of Fame, the Basketball Hall of Fame. So um, there's that. The question now becomes, should he be a Hall of Famer? And the answer is, I don't think so. I I don't. Um, 
I feel like the the criteria for a Hall of Fame in any sport should be higher. It should be the best of the best of the best. And at no point can we say that Derrick Rose, maybe if he never gets hurt, but we'll never know. But we'll at never no know. Point we say he's even he was even approaching top 10 point guard status. I can't see that. And so with that being the case, I can't I can't imagine this dude is getting into the Hall of Fame. And and the other thing I'll say, which is kind of odd being coached by Tibbs, I don't recollect him being uh, a particular Defensive player. player. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to say he was loafing on defense. Tibbs is not going to allow that. But I don't think he was a, a particularly good defensive player. Um, Let's hear some commentary on this argument from the Dan Patrick show, and then we'll come back and talk about it some more. Sort of John Moran before John Moran. Uh, he was extremely athletic, came out of Memphis, and he was an immediate hit there. If you look at uh, winning your MVP uh, in the first three years of your career, he did so his third year in Chicago. Bob McAdoo did that in uh, his third year in Buffalo. Dave Cowens did that as well. I mean, we've had a lot of uh, players who have ended up winning their MVP in the first three years or so. Uh, Kareem won it his second, Wes Unseld his first, Wilt his first, Bill Russell his second, Bob Pettit his second. But uh, Derrick Rose was in his third year, then he got injured and was really never the same. And it's almost as if he had played six years instead of 12 years. Like he would have been probably a Hall of Famer because I think the voters would have given him the benefit of the doubt of what could have been. But he did hang on, he did play, uh, probably didn't matter too much to many people here watching unless, you know, you saw him occasionally on a highlight. But he was a highlight when he played with the Chicago Bulls. But he was extremely athletic, uh, explosive, fun, and different uh, coming into the league. But Hall of Fame voters sometimes give you a hall pass if you have a terrible injury because you were on your way to the Hall of Fame. We mentioned Gail Sayers the other day. I think Grant Hill goes in for his entire career. Does is Derrick Rose on the cusp, or is it not that close for the Hall of Fame? No, because of the controversy at Memphis. So I'm, I'm including Grant Hill at Duke winning titles. And you can make an argument he was the best player on the team, and that's saying a lot back then. But with what – they vacated those, those wins, I think, at Memphis, didn't they, in the Final Four appearance or the uh, final game appearance? Yes, Marvin. But I think the standards for the Basketball Hall of Fame, no disrespect, they're a little bit lower than football – in baseball. Yes. So yes. every single person that's won the MVP award in the NBA, they're in the hall. That's eligible. So okay. I think the MVP award gets him in. Like if Penny Hardaway won an MVP award, he'd be in. So, yeah, I think I think we're all in agreement that he will get in. But um, this is where I kind of uh, divert from you guys. I don't believe he should be in. And um Good point, Nino. Definitely. Uh, Sterling Sharp, except I think, well. Bring Sterling me back, Sharp, by the way. You know, shout out Sterling. Sterling Sharp was probably better for a little longer in his game than uh, Derrick Rose was in his. So I totally get it. Um, Sneed says uh, he agrees standards should be higher, but they are not. And that's true, too. Like, um, we got to we gotta look at it that way as well. The, it's kind of what they are. And again, we know that the the basketball hall of fame is, is the weakest of all of them, but I just, you know, as good as he was, I, I don't, he's not a hall of famer, but he will get in. Um, so here, here goes the next question that kind of uh, gets, gets brought up based on Derek Rose and his retirement and, and watching him now comes the, what if, uh, if he never got injured, how good does he get to be? Like if we oh, can boy. prognosticate out, if he never gets injured, how good do you think he becomes? That's a good one. Um, how great you can never, in hindsight, you know, see you know what he could have been. But yeah, I can tell you, he would have been a freaking problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he, I mean, obviously the the kid was just so explosive. The kid had mm -hmm. bounce out of this world. He could mm -hmm. shoot the ball, and I think it, it, once you have the combination of shooting and the athletic ability, your trajectory is. Is, is high it's, it's going to mm -hmm. be high and i think um he would have definitely averaged at minimum i would say five six more straight seasons of 20 plus a game mm -hmm. um more opportunities to play um lebron james in the eastern conference finals um or in the eastern conference in general and getting up there and opportunities to you know make it to the nba finals um i think his career 
we will be having a different conversation. It'll be like, oh, yeah, for sure. Man. Why are we having this conversation? Him getting in the Hall of Fame. You know, mm-hmm. I think that would be more of the conversation then because he would have more seasons of great play under his belt. I think the 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 reason why we're questioning it now is because of the the lack of high quality seasons, but that was due to injury. Mm-hmm. I think if he still plays, I mean, we're we're not even having this conversation right now. We're just having a celebratory moment of when is he gonna get in the hall of fame? Is it first ballot, second ballot? You know, and I think the answer would have still been first ballot hall of fame if he would uh you know have more um games in his prime. Yeah. Yeah, he was definitely unstoppable. The only thing that stopped him was injury. And that yep. wasn't just because it actually it 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 kind of it took away from the the sport actually with with him going down because yeah. look at that 2010 2011 season it's just filled with highlights man so sad he went down but he was able to get back up and that is that mm-hmm. itself touched yeah that's big him. yeah that, that, and and for, I believe we belong in the Hall of Fame but that reason alone you know being able to get back up a lot of times we don't get to see players you know kind of overcome injuries and all the hard work and if it's part of the game yes. But a lot of times we don't see players like putting in the work to get back to even being able to play and to drop a fifty ball. It's crazy work. So crazy you, work. <laughs> you think him doing what he's paid to do and working hard to come back from injury gets him in the hole? First thing game. you said, I think what he's getting paid to do, right, is basketball. So he could get paid a million dollars. He could donate three million dollars. What I think is is to overcome that type of adversity. You need to have a certain level of mental focus to be able to want to return to the sport of basketball. That is mm-hmm. all I think. I don't think anything else about. It. I think he's a, he's a great player who destroyed a lot of guards in the league. He was deemed damn near unstoppable. And so yeah. for that, that in itself, that those are my two points for why I would put him in the Hall of Fame. But you know who am I? Um. Okay. Uh. So here's here's the other thing. How do you think his game ages as, you know, obviously you get older, your athleticism wanes. He could shoot, but wasn't necessarily a shooter at the guard position. And now you move it. With, I think he's what, less than 32% from three from his career. And that's not the end all be all, except for the fact that as he progressed in his career, the league changed into a three point shooting league. So how do you think he's able to still be that guy without that part of his game i believe as as he went on um he had some seasons where he shot it well from three but overall yeah not you know a particularly uh outstanding um shooter and so it makes you wonder like okay how does he how does he survive excuse me how does he survive and and carry on as an impact player without that aspect of his game based on the fact that um you know the league changed so much that's kind of I mean, you look at John Morant, you look at John Morant, you look at Russell Westbrook and you see how they withstood their career off pure. Ap- I mean, Westbrook, for sure, off pure athleticism, never really never known as a shooter. Very, very bad shooter um, when it came to the three ball. But you look at John Morant, you look at how was a bit of an anomaly was. with how the way he could contribute all over offensively with the whole triple double piece. Like, yeah, we know he kind of cheated on that a little bit, but, yeah. you know, in terms of how he could be so much so many things as one player and so i think russell westbrook's a bit of an anomaly but i I get what you're saying but go ahead i'm sorry to cut you yeah i mean but like like i said you look at john like john morant look at his trajectory he's not known Mm -hmm. as a three-point shooter he's not really known as a shooter at all he's Mm -hmm. known as a you know drive taker you know real fierce on the interior being being as small as he was i believe derrick rose is like bulkier than uh john morant Mm -hmm. um but i think you know like he shot good enough to be able to withstand it um, like you said, later on in his career, I'm looking at his numbers here. Um, I'm looking at him too. Shot 37% from three, mm-hmm. um, 20, 20 shot 38. So he started to develop that later on in his career. And the reason his, I mean, his three point shot is actually particularly low is because he came back off of injury so much. You know, shooting a three ball is more like to learn it, you have to be within rhythm and it has to be a True. focal point. You know, that, that stops you. When you're having those ACL injuries back and you back, can't get the reps over up over and over and over, you can't get the reps up. So obviously mm-hmm. your shooting is gonna wane. Um, look at Steph Curry when he uh I believe he hurt his ankle mm-hmm. and he came back that following season. He really it took him a while to get back to Steph Curry. You know, he, he mm-hmm. couldn't really shoot the ball as well. So that 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 stops your your development and understanding and getting that rhythm that those reps that you would typically get throughout the season and practice and you know, during the offseason. That hurts it when you're spending the whole offseason recovering. 
right? Like you, mm-hmm. you're having a, you're having another surgery, you're having another scope. So you can't be on the court for another month, two months, three months, four months at a time, you know, that, that wanes on you. So I think if he doesn't get hurt, I think he would have def- I mean, I'm not saying he would have been no, nobody's going to be Steph Curry. That's a horrible example to make, but he would have been decent enough. I would say 34 percent, you know, 33 percent. I think that's a great percent. I mean, a good enough percentage for you to be relevant in today's NBA. Uh, I don't think that's that's uh, that's below league average. Right. League average is about thirty five and a half. So like you at least want to be league average, especially as a guard. I, I just I don't know. Um, I'm not trying to take shots at the guy. I'm just kind of asking the questions. So let's let's do this now. Um, let's let's name a few guys: uh, Grant Hill, mm-hmm. Derrick Rose, Penny Hardaway. Um, who else? Who else is a great player that had their career? Brandon Roy. Injuries. Brandon Roy. Um, which one of them is the best if they stay healthy? Ooh, boy! Yeah, Grant Hill. <laughs> I would. Yes. I would. Yeah, I would that say is the correct Hill. response. Yeah, I would say. See what you Hill. got? Yeah. I think by default I'll go with Grant Hill, but Derrick Rose in an era where the gods just wasn't just wasn't that like that. Think, yeah, they was like we they we wasn't. never saw that, right? Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah. You know, go ahead. But for both of them though, I think they both was like they both came in the league when and you hear people talking about them, you know, them having like the left right hand, left hand, a left hand, uh, and Grant Hill a left hand make all the moves. But, but his jumper wasn't there, right? They always they always said that like you know he could put the ball on the floor, but mm-hmm. his, his mid range and the three point line wasn't wasn't that developed. So mm-hmm. I think that was on come, but I hate. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so, would you say that? Would you say that for Grant Hill? We gotta say yeah, it for yeah. Derrick Rose. We gotta say it for no, Derrick Rose yeah, because you never really know. Can't say it for Derrick Rose because he was a point guard, and so he had assists. Like his his assist game was still crazy too. But I'm talking about the shooting. I'm sorry. Is, I, didn't, I didn't mean to go. Oh, the shooting? Go ahead. Yeah, I was talking about the shooting. Just strictly the shooting. Yeah. Because right. you said, like, you know, <laughs> developing the shooting with Grant Hill. No, I, seen him make I, I was thinking more the mid-range, not the three. But really, I really good you. threes, man. I seen him make some clutch threes. And so, yeah, probably over, over time, it, it kind of got away as he started coming off the bench and such. Um, but, you know, just those things that happen. This, this is shoulda, woulda, coulda, and being subjective, saying who would have had a better – Career, we really don't know, bro. Like, mm-hmm. really no, but that, that's one of those things that you know you like to talk about, and just it's you know it's barbershop talk, it's it's sports podcast talk, and um, I also think it's Grant Hill because I mean, Grant Hill could he could lock you up defensively. Um, Grant Hill could run the point forward. I mean, like you said, other than the shooting, and I think the mid range was probably going to happen, but obviously Grant Hill played in a time for most of his career before before the three-point revolution right he retired in after the 2012 season so Mm -hmm. um the three-pointer had started to become in vogue but it still wasn't anywhere like it is now so um it's it's really hard to rate guys as shooters who played in an era where shooting wasn't paramount you know what i'm saying in in terms of long-range distance shooting but yeah i I think it would have been grand hill and that's that's no shot at the other guys i think i think they're all outstanding in their own way but I think Grant Hill was a monster because of the fact that he was better than all the other three on the other side of the ball as well. Like he could he could do all that and then he could really strap up and um lock guys down. I think I think that was huge. But uh yeah, man, Derrick Rose, uh special, special talent, just um elite uh in terms of you know his athleticism, his his bounce was absurd <laughs> as as we saw. But um yeah, Crazy. Was, yeah, yeah. Derrick Rose was absolutely like nobody's really doing back scratches and like it, it, like at a point guard level like you know you you see mm-hmm. your, your power forwards you know what i mean your your, your um your um jesus christ seattle supersonics sean kemp like you know you mm-hmm. see like cock mm-hmm. it back because yeah, they yeah. had the length they had the power right and and the size on them i mean derrick rose was what six six two six three i thought it was derrick rose by six three i believe Six two, I think. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he was six, particularly six, a big guard. Good, good point, yeah, he, Kyle. He's yeah. listed at six three. Listed at six three, and like having it behind your head mm-hmm. and having yeah. the ability to just throw it down because he know he don't really hang on the rim like that. I'm throwing nah. it in the rim, and yeah, then yeah, I'm yeah. coming down. Like, come on, bro. Right. Like, that's, and that's and I've that's I've often thought maybe he could have saved some of that impact on his knees if he would have hung on the rim a little more yeah. often Absolutely. instead of just you know banging it and then coming, coming right down, down with all that force. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, power of a horror with our car. He says 
De'Aaron Fox and Shai Gilgis Alexander, another example of success without being an outstanding three point shooter. Uh, SGA is SGA is thirty five percent from three for his career. Looking at it right now, so yeah, just average. Um, and De'Aaron Fox, um, yeah, I don't think he's elite either. But De'Aaron Fox is like elite speed. Like very few players can stay in front of that dude. He's a thirty three percent. Uh, for his career from three. But last season, he shot 37%. So let's see if that continues to improve. Um, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And that's that's a solid point. Uh, yeah, so D-Rose, man, D-Rose. It's going to be, I mean, and you know what's the funny thing? When I was uh, researching this topic here, I was, I was looking up his stats and stuff like that. And I was surprised to see that he averaged over 17 for his career because he did it quietly. And like you said, he had yeah. a number of seasons 17, 18, 16, 18. Correct. You know, Still following his yeah. knees getting destroyed. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, if you go watch his highlights, man, he, he was he was nice with the with the finishes, the reverses and the trick layups and all that stuff. Once he yeah. couldn't really, you know, explode and throw it down the way he used to. It was very, very impressive. So yeah. Um I would say uh a great career and and we'll see where it takes him. But to your point that MVP is probably going to get him into the Hall of Fame. So, yeah, I agree. I think without a doubt. I mean, because now you're the the election process, you look silly. You're like, right. Man, we got like every he's the MVP only one on here. Yeah. We're going to make one of, not mm-hmm. the owner. Come on, man. You got to you got to keep him on there. Yeah. You got you to yeah. put him in there. Right. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the number in the chat. 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264. And, uh, now it's your you guys' turn. You can go ahead and uh, give us a call. The number's also uh, scrolling on the bottom of the screen. You can give us a call and uh, give us your thoughts on Derrick Rose. Should he be a Hall of Famer? Do you, do you think he should? Um, do you think he'll get in? I think we're – well, I'm not, not I don't think, but all three of us are in agreement that he will. Yeah. I'm the only one who thinks he probably shouldn't. So uh, but I think That's yeah. a different conversation, though. Like, you know, at mm-hmm. that point, like, I believe Sneed said this, the standards – or where they at like they're yeah. just so yeah. low right yeah. that you don't necessarily have to be a um uh like a, i'm not don't mean to bring them up like a lebron james resident mm-hmm. mm-hmm. no 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 i get it. I get it. multiple mvps you know right. kobe bryant's tim duncan's right. and stuff like that you consider that because you're thinking superstar yeah like i carried yeah. i carried my team for multiple years on a row mm-hmm. you know finals appearances maybe yeah. not necessarily wins but mm-hmm. you know multiple mvps and things of that nature that's what you kind of right. think of when you think of hall of fame um, but you know, the standards is just incredibly low, man. It's every mm-hmm. MVP got it. <laughs> you know, literally every MVP yeah. got it. Football doesn't have it that way. All the MVPs don't have no. it. No. You know, so football yeah. is a different ball game. I think Sean Sean Alexander won MVP, right? Yeah. He won an MVP. He's not in the Hall of Fame. There you go. Nope. So you know. Um speaking of football, man, can I, while we're waiting it? on these phone calls to come in, yeah. Aston Genty has a thousand yards. Under a hundred carries, a Who's thousand that? yards. Aston, the running back out of Boise State. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That kid. That oh, yeah. kid is freak. freaking running it right now. Yeah. Has, right now he has ten carries, one hundred sixty-five mm-hmm. yards, three touchdowns in the football game. Right now, and I think they're in the third, second freak. quarter. They're in the you second know, quarter. You know what you call that guy? What is it? Uh, a bowling <laughs> ball full of full of butcher knives. Because <laughs> like you watch, because he's like you know short and stocky type build. Yeah, and um, when guys try to tackle him, he's he's running through the arm tackles. It's crazy. Yeah, he's a problem. My, my partner just said this man is playing on rookie level Madden, <laughs> running the football. For real, man. for real. <laughs> That's I mean, nuts, he, dude. He's not he's not playing the top competition, but he is nice. He is killing whatever's in front of him. Killing whatever's in front, of him. and that that's what you're supposed to kill do. Whatever, whatever they put in front of you. Front of you. Yep. Really, that's right. Yeah, he's 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 doing that. There's <laughs> no question. Yes about Crazy, it man oh my goodness all right well i guess we're not going to get any calls on uh on this topic so um all right let's move on let's 